The new 2021 drivers have officially been on the market for a while now, so we thought it's about time we put them to the test. Wow. <laughs> To get this review right, we sought out the Iron Byron. You probably recognize him from the Phoenix Open where he hit a hole in one on hole 16. Now he's gonna help us help you pick the best driver. What do you love about the Iron Byron? The great thing about a robot is it swings exactly the same every time. It's a great way to measure one club to another, apples to apples. We're using exactly the same balls. We use exactly the same shaft, and the speeds are exactly the same, and where we hit is exactly the same. Now, the one that wins this test, the one that goes the furthest, isn't necessarily the one that's right for you. Everybody swings a little differently. So we set this test up at neutral. Somebody hits it higher or lower and stuff, we can adjust for that and see how it's, all these different clubs would work for an individual golfer. First one we got here is a Callaway LS. All right, Callaway, let's see what you can do here. Look like a pretty good shot. So this particular model, the Epic Max LS, is their better player club. They've done some things and tweaked the jailbreak stuff quite a bit. Biggest thing, obviously, they're still focusing on AI and trying millions of different faces to find out what's the best. So ball speed is good as usual. It's got an adjustable weight, more adjustability than the higher handicap ones. They're really fine tuning right and left. The next driver we got is the TaylorMade Sim 2. Basically, our technology here is they've got actually a slice in the face here to give it more rebound effect. Internally, they actually make the heads illegal and then foam fill them to bring them back to just legal. Compared to last year's model, it changed the color scheme a little bit. I like the blue, actually. Sounds and feels a little better and the looks a little cleaner, too. It's not quite as shiny and kind of nice and dull. Next up, we got the Ping G425. Here we go. What do you like about the ping, Mark? Well, the ping actually is one of the lowest ones we've got as far as spin. So if you're a low or high spin player, uh, this was down to 1800 RPM, so it's pretty low. Ping is really an engineering firm. A little more mechanical looking head. They don't care about looks so much as they do performance. It is one of the lowest spinning drivers. Matter of fact, Ping's whole line, for the most part, is relatively low spin. And it's just a very forgiving driver. Up next, we got the Titleist TSI-3. All right, so the Titleist is kind of right in the middle. It's actually super forgiving for a really classic looking head. Titleist is definitely back in the game this year. And they've changed the material to using a lighter, stronger titanium. Just really nice, clean looking club. If you look at this, this is a classic golf club. Titleist back on the map. Yeah, they're back on the map. I mean, the other ones are good too. You got Callaway and TaylorMade that kick ass as well, and Ping does a great job, so. Right. But they're definitely in the mix. Very cool. So our test of parameters today is we've swung it at 85 miles an hour, which is what the average golfer swings at. We used a standard middle of the road shaft at the right flex for that speed. The robot swings exactly the same each time. So as we put different clubs on it, we get different results. If we're just measuring distance, and this is at zero angle attack and zero pass, the ping would win in the carry area. And for total distance, because of roll, the Callaway LS would win. But don't be misled. That's for the robot swinging, not necessarily yours. And next we'll look at how forgiving these clubs. So we don't just hit it dead center, we actually hit nine points on the face. So toe, heel, both sides, up and down. One of the ways to measure how forgiving a golf club is, is we set the robot up and we hit all nine spots. And in this case, actually, the best dispersion was the TaylorMade Sim 2, uh, with least dispersion as you hit all the places. One of their deals is twist face, and apparently it works. Let's go to the next parameter we look at, which is spin. Really important thing for distance and how far the ball flies. So spin is relative to how you hit down on it or hit up on it. Typically, higher club head speeds need lower spinning clubs um, to keep the ball from ballooning. And lower club head speeds need more lift to get it up in the air and to keep it carrying further. If you're a low spin player, not a lot of club head speed or whatever, in this case, you'd want actually the Titleist because it spins quite a bit more per launch than the other drivers here. All right, all that data is pretty cool, but you're not a robot. You're a human, and humans suck at golf, and they do stupid things. So we came up with a couple of examples of what stupid things could happen with these drivers and put it to the test. Kind of cool, actually. So this first test is the walk of shame. We've all got that buddy that hits a bad golf shot and throws his golf club. The club that goes the least distance might be the best pick for a guy that's got anger management issues. His walk of shame to go pick it up will be shorter. Walk of shame, here we go. Ping. Up 
titles. Taylor May. Looks like Ping gives you the shortest walk of shame. Okay, let's say you're just as bad at throwing your golf club as you are as hitting a golf ball with it, and you throw it in the water. Will these bad boys sink or swim? We're gonna put the four of them to the test. Oh, geez. The Ping G425, the Callaway Epic Max LS, Titleist TSI 3, the TaylorMade Sim Max 2. They're not sinking. All right, guys, so we threw a lot of data and a lot of golf clubs at you. So which one of these new drivers is best for you? We don't know. Go get fit and find out yourself, I guess. Just, we gave you a lot to think about.